it's Hadley. We're here tonight at the Orphanage Gallery. It's first Friday, October 1st, to kick off the spooky month. We have Lova Dellis and Cathead Reynolds mail art show. That means that tons of artists, international and local, have shipped in their work to be exhibited. And it's called Cat Army. And what does Cat Army mean exactly? We'll find out more. And I brought my cat ears to check it out. I'm here with Cathead Reynolds and Lova Dellis, and they're going to tell me a little bit about this whole gallery that they have curated. What is the name of this show, guys? This is the Cat Army Show, Disorder of the Bee Cat Army. Uh, the name, originally Disorder of the Bee, came from Georgia Albertus, who's actually uh, an occult writer from London. But it was just about, uh, you know, we worry about the bees, you know, because as bees start to go away, there's no food. You know, we want to love the world we're in. And, uh, and the cat army is just kind of funny because it's like herding cats. You know, you're trying to get everybody together to do something new, and that's hard to do these days. But we did it. It's all here. This is a giant mail art show. It's ridiculous. Yeah, cat armies, um, you know, we love mail art, so we go with the mail art tradition of collaboration and inclusion and um, just showcasing everyone's differences from all over the world and also where we meet and where we connect and how they complement each other. And we were fortunate to have a lot of local artists included as well. Um, and just it was just more collaboration and more bringing artists together for a unified vision just for the sake of creativity and keeping it alive. What is Fluxus? Oof. Uh, that's a pretty tough question, but I would say my best guess is you could describe it as uh, John Cage uh, will be doing a benefit at the Orphanage Gallery for Black Mountain College in January. But he, uh, he taught artists the idea of writing a score, a period of time uh, where you make a statement about what you do with time. Uh, and artists took this on as that means I can do anything. You know, uh, uh, Yoko Ono said then take a canvas and fill it with nails. Just keep hammering it with nails till it's done. You know, it could be artistic like that or it could be so conceptual that it almost feels like life. Uh, that's maybe Fluxus's biggest contribution. Uh, Academy is highly inspired by Fluxus and artists that are inspired by Fluxus as well. And George and Billy, of course. Yeah, and uh, uh, Billy Machinist has been a support from the beginning, and we love her. Um, she's she was the wife of George Machinist. Uh, she's more of a poet, you know. Really, uh, she did do a poem for us. I will uh, add it at some point while she's talking. I'll okay. find it. Okay. Um, let's see. I I learned about Fluxus through Cat Army by joining Cat Army. My phone's dead. <laughs> So to me, when I first hear Cat Army, I think cats. Is that what Cat Army is? It's just uh, the cats part of it was connected to, I guess, our, our kind of leanings towards, you know, encouraging women to participate and, you know, the feminine side of felineness and things like that. Uh, well, I learned about Fluxus through Cat Army. Um, I learned about scores and um, just the general idea of performance art. Um, in relation to Fluxus, it's, I think it's more than that. Um, and you wrote your own sports. It's an, yeah, it's, uh, some people say it's an attitude, um, and, you know, it's, I think Fluxus is about experimenting and experiencing um, both your thought and your life as art. And, um, you know, he, you mentioned Yoko Ono, and she has a lot of pieces that are um, in her book, Grapefruit, that are like more explorations in your mind. You don't really do a whole lot. You don't make anything, um, but that's not the point. And so that's, that's my take on Fluxus from what I've learned from Cat Army. And one of the main goals of mail art and Fluxus is really to get exposure, to show artists that haven't been seen, is that correct? Uh, no, I'd say it was more, it started with the, the New York Correspondence School with Ray Johnson. He really wanted people to, to be able to communicate with art. Art's almost a language of its own. And um, 
he, he didn't start mail art, mail art always existed, but he initiated it as a tactic for people to come together and do something uh, that's uh, follow through on a thought like this, you know, I mean, you know, just do some strange thing or think of something together. They interact through art. Yeah. And will you guys be doing a performance tonight? Yeah, I mean, uh, we can definitely, we can organize cat event. Uh, if I can get enough people, I will just ask a bunch of people to act like cats. Yeah, I'll be uh, doing a, a score that Chris wrote, um, and it's Order a Pizza. Which uh, Keith Buckholt put in the Harvard Library, which was nice of him. Uh, and he named his cat uh, uh, B, because we're Disorder of the Bee Cat Army, which was really oh, okay. sweet, and his cat died, and it was yeah. very unfortunate. But we, uh, we, you know, said nice things. That whenever a member of Cat Army loses um, an animal, a pet friend, you know. Yeah, we, Luke Farron's lost a cat, too. It was yeah. surprising. We, uh, when we decided to focus on cats, we didn't realize that I guess that's it'd be so touching when people lost their cats, but it was. Yeah. It's, I guess, you know, part of the cat theme is also, um, about, I think, connecting with nature uh, and, the, you know, yeah. cats and bees, but connecting with nature, connecting with animals, connecting with that part of ourselves and exploring it. And um, so, yeah. We're just, we're all just animals trying to be a little smarter and treat each other nice. <laughs> yeah. you know. Okay, thanks, guys. All right, I'm Chris Cathead Reynolds. We're at the uh, Cat Army Mail Art Show, and everybody's going to perform Cat Event where they act like cats. We have a bunch of really wonderful people here. Okay, so ready? And act like that. Hi, it's Hadley Rodebeck. We're here today at the Orphanage Gallery with two very special guests. They came from Columbus, Ohio. This is John M. Bennett and C. Merrill Bennett. How are you guys doing today? Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any pieces up today? Yes, quite a bit in here. There's yes. some over there. And okay. Here and so oh, on. great. Mm -hmm. And um, other work you guys do is poetry, correct? Correct. Yes. Visual poetry, and John does you know, regular text, text, text textual poetry. text poetry. Yeah, yes. we call it. But the visual poetry is often a combination between um, visual and the textuals. Um, and I think mail art may have had a lot to do with that because people sending mail back and forth, artists especially, combine text with their images. And, you know, that's, I think that was part of the start of visual poetry. Yeah, visual poetry, especially in Europe and Latin America, is an important part of male art. Less so in the U.S., but uh, it is present in the U.S. as well in male art. But in general, male art is something that has existed since the post office service started in Europe in the 18th century. Uh, people send art of some sort or another through the mail. The uh, current uh, promotion of it began in the 60s with the Fluxus people. Uh, and basically the idea is if you put a stamp on it and mail it, uh, no matter what it is. I've people have mailed bricks before by putting postage on it. I received a raw steak in the mail once in the middle of July from California, and it was <laughs> reeking and leaking in the mailbox. Yeah, and one of the things about mail art exhibits is that uh, a major rule is that there are no rules about what you send in. There might be a theme that's suggested, like Cat Army, but everything that is sent in for the mail art show is to be exhibited. It's not curated. So um, in that respect, it's different from a regular art gallery. Um, you're not being judged. So the, you, you can be, it could be artwork from grade school kids. You know, it's, it doesn't matter what is sent in. It's going to be shown. Yeah, some people uh, use the mail as a medium. In other words, the fact that it's mailed is the art. 
Uh, other people use the mail as a medium to send their own artwork or, or writing or whatever it is uh, and send it around that way. And there's all kinds of gray areas between these two general types of mail art. So. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I would say here, there are some examples of asemic poetry, which I consider a category of visual poetry. Um, and the, I think one of the main contributors of that to this show is Sil Sylvia Van Newton. She's a wonderful male artist. Um, here are two of her pieces. And you might consider it something like hieroglyphs that nobody really knows how to read, um, but they can be performed um, by anyone who wishes to make, make an audio version of their interpretation of the asemic poetry. So would you like to do that together, John? Okay, I can't see that very well. Uh, uh, all right, You sure. want to do a line and I'll do a line? All right, we're alternating lines. Meow. That's it. <laughs> that's all I got there. All right, so that's sound poetry. Uh, now, wow. uh, the term asemic means it has no meaning, but I don't think there is anything like no meaning to poetry. I mean, this stuff that we just read, it has some kind of meaning uh, different for everyone who looks at it. Uh, and the same thing is true of abstract art. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, each person who looks at it is going to have a different interpretation. And, and that's true of poetry in general, you know, for even poetry text. You're going to have a different interpretation depending on what mood you're in when you read it. You might read it again the next week or month and have a different ideas, get different ideas from it. It stems from your ex life experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, an interesting story is that back in the 70s, we met in the mail. We were doing mail art, and I got this mail from someone named C. Merrill, and uh, it was interesting and responded, and so we got more and more uh, responsive towards the past uh, throughout the uh, next couple of years, and eventually she came for a visit, and, you know, the rest was... True love. True love. Oh, that's a true love story. Yeah. <laughs> there is a video about it called Male Art Romance, and you can find it on Vimeo. A friend of ours was doing a, a, a film, mm -hmm. um, and graduate degree or something. Yeah, yeah, a... yeah, yeah, at OSU, and he made it for, the, for his project, so, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. I'm, I've learned so much. <laughs>